Michigan Magazine is kept on the road by our many Michigan friends. Thunder Bay Resort, a destination for all seasons with special events and packages. Thunder Bay Resort in Hillman. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare. A winning combination. Cops and Donuts. <laughs> The Michigan Renaissance Festival, August 16th to September 28th. Don't miss our live underwater mermaid attraction. On this week's Michigan Magazine, join us for a trip into the beautiful Upper Peninsula to visit Dennis Sotola of Copper Harbor. Dennis is a master basket maker who actually takes the raw bark from down trees, processes it himself, and magically turns it into beautiful baskets. Then we spotlight northeastern lower Michigan again with another preview of the Blessing of the Bikes and experience the first of its kind at the Oscoda County Area River Fest in Mayo. Then we're giving away tickets to the big Renaissance Festival going on now in Holly, Michigan. Information and how to win will be at the end of today's program. Also, stay tuned for this week's Phrase of the Week for more chances to win great prizes from Michigan Magazine. It's all coming up, so stay tuned for another edition of Michigan Magazine. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, what began as a crazy idea among nine police officers to purchase the historic Clare City Bakery quickly became an international phenomenon, carrying on a Michigan tradition with delicious donuts, pies, pastries, breads, original coffee, and more, plus a full menu at the new adjacent Traffic Stop Diner. Downtown Clare, a winning combination, Cops and Donuts. Clemex Sales and Service on Mapes Road, west of Mile, your complete recreational vehicle sales and service connection. Visit their beautiful showroom of new and pre-owned ATVs, lawnmowers, power equipment, snowmobiles, utility vehicles, and more. Clemex Sales and Service is also the home of the American-made Victory Motorcycle Line on display at Clemex on Mapes Road, Mile. Tucked away in the northernmost reaches of Michigan, in the Keweenaw Peninsula's Copper Harbor area, you'll find the artistry of basket weaver Dena Sotola. Dennis, a Keweenaw native, has been making baskets out of black ash for over 16 years. Dennis told Michigan Magazine that finding a good tree for stripping and weaving is recreation to him. Dennis selects his trees carefully from the thick forests that surrounds the Copper Harbor area. He told us that finding the right tree is a year-round project. Even in the UP's severe winters, Dennis puts on snowshoes and takes the toboggan for a walk upstream from his camp to find a black ash that's clear of limbs and whose growth rings are adequate for weaving material. At times, you may see Dennis deep in the bush, pushing a log end over end, sometimes up to two miles into the snow to his camp. But the end result of the extra effort is both satisfying and rewarding to both him and those who discover his quaint little shop on the main street of Copper Harbor. We followed Dennis into the woods one day in Copper Country and witnessed the artist in action. After first finding a suitable tree, a core sample is taken. And you look for what? The, the thickness of the, uh, the growth rings. Okay. Well, what does that determine? I mean, it'll show me how, how thick the splints are going to be. Okay. I, uh, if it has thick growth rings, I can use it for pack baskets, laundry baskets. It's a little thinner, thinner growth rings. We use it for some of the uh, egg baskets. Okay, so what do you more know about decorative baskets? What do you know about this tree? What would this be used for? Then? This would probably be for a more decorative. Uh, we'll we'll see in a minute. Okay. Right in here, it's before 
thick enough for more decorative baskets. Then down in here you can get in pack basket material. I see. Uh, about 20 years ago I was uh, living up in a, a shack up in the woods up here and unemployed in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine said that he knew someone who made baskets out of cedar. And I started out that winter making cedar baskets, giving away Christmas presents the next year. And shortly after that, I was selling them to the local shops. Mm -hmm. And since after that, um, that first year, I started working with black ash also. And had a little trouble finding a good tree and knowing how to work it. And I talked with an Indian that winter. And uh, next year, I started working with black ash. And that was about in 1974. And black ash is pretty much your primary. This this is the, this is what I use for the weaving of the of the uh, baskets. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, I'll use either black ash or white ash for the rims and handles. The white ash is a little stronger. White ash or green ash, mm -hmm. and it splits better. Okay. Now, when you go out into the woods to find your tree, what do you look at when you first spot it? And what's a procedure before you cut it down? I'll go into a, a swamp, cedar swamp that has a little stream running through it. Look for a tree that looks like they're fast growing, a healthy top on it, uh, not much in dead limbs or no dead limbs. And then I'll take something like an increment bore, make a little tap on the tree, and see how thick the annual growth rings are. And that'll tell me if I want that tree or not. Most of them in this area are just paper thin. They're not, not much good, mm -hmm. and they don't, wouldn't grow very big. Uh, a few trees in a, in a a good swamp will produce, you know, I'll find a few trees in a, uh, in a certain areas in a good swamp and I'll, I'll get a tree out of there mm -hmm. and it'll, it'll show some thicker growth rings like you see right down in here. I'm working in sapwood in here. If the uh, tree rings, the growth rings are heavy, I'll be able to make pack baskets out of them mm -hmm. and laundry baskets. Uh, if they're finer, have closer um, have lesser amount of growth, mm -hmm. then I'll be using them for the more refined baskets. Okay, okay. And the uh, sapwood will give me one color, the uh, heartwood will give oh. another shade of color, and I use that decorative design in the baskets. Oh, that's amazing. Now, how do you go about getting the bark off and uh, proceeding with that? Well, let's Should drag this it? thing okay. out of here let's and get it. it over here. All right. Take my spud here, the wonder bar. The wonder bar. Now, if I'm lucky, it's there's still a lot of sap in here, and this is going to come off in a hurry. Oh, look at that! If it's in the winter time and it's all frozen on there, that takes a little more work. Eh? I will be chipping it off the tree, actually beating it off like I do the take the strips. This is gonna this is gonna be easier. Oh, look at that! A moist strip is the best strip to use, so if you have strips laying around for a while, you can reconstitute them more or less, can't you? And uh, I'll, keep on... I'll uh, take these off the tree, segregate them into different uh, different thicknesses, uh -huh. and let them dry. Then whenever I need one, I'll take it. Okay. Take it out and soak it either five minutes, or if I have heavy material, it might take an hour or so to wet it down. Oh. If I need it in a hurry, I'll put it in hot water. Now, I'm going to score the log with this knife, trying to follow the grain. Okay. Now, now, let's see what happens. Oh, this loosens well, the levels up. I'm breaking apart the growth rings. to hit every bit of this or else it isn't going to come out. I'll, I'll start losing it in that area where I don't hit it. Mm -hmm. I, lived, I lived up here until I was uh, six years old and then spent my summers up here after that living with my grandmother. Mm -hmm. 
and wanted to move back and finally did in my late 20s. Mm -hmm. But 40 acres out in the woods about a mile off a of paved road and plowed road and built a tar paper shack and added on a cabin and then we'll put them in a bucket, soak them and then we have to make the rims and rims and handles. I'll take another log and like if it was this one, I'd split it in half, quarters, mm -hmm. eighths, until I get a piece like this, this off of there. Get a wedge off. Okay. I'll split a split the uh, log down to something like this, and I'll take this and plant it over my knee to start making the uh, handles and the rim. If I do it carefully enough and got a good piece of wood, I'll be able to start bending it, working it into a shape until, and tack it together. I made this one I the see. other night, and make a handle like that, a couple of copper tacks in there, Michigan mm -hmm. copper, no doubt. Of course. And uh, a rim to go fit on there. Mm -hmm. And then I'll take a splint, put a diamond on a basket, if that's what type I'm going to make, or a fishing creel or a pack basket to be doing something else. Dennis Sodalai and his wife, who's also a basket weaver, have made Copper Harbor their home out of choice. Dennis, a native of the Keweenaw Peninsula, spent some time in other parts of Michigan, but the beauty and inspiration have always brought him back to Copper Harbor to create his works of art out of the nature that surrounds this extraordinarily beautiful part of Michigan's northernmost reaches. Beautiful baskets and ornaments that reflect the very essence of Michigan. From the hands of Dennis Sotola, Woodweaver. Michigan Magazine is being brought to you in part by Hale Hardware, your do-it center at Hale, Michigan. Much more than a regular hardware store, providing everything you need for whatever your project is, along with a knowledgeable sales staff to get her done. Serving Northern Michigan since 1946. Hale Hardware, south of M65 at Ainsley in Hale. Rose Valley Winery on Beachwood Road in Rose City. See what thousands are raving about, creating a delicious variety of award-winning Michigan wines. Stop by and taste for yourself. The taste of Michigan is yours at Rose Valley Winery. Remembering good times and great food, Frank and Lisa invite you to Tim Lizzie's in Bile for a blast back to the 50s and 60s when food was made from scratch, including home ground Angus burgers. A full menu of great food and good memories await you at the new Tim Lizzie's of Mayo.
We thank you again for all that you're doing in our lives. And we pray, Lord, for a great ride, safe ride this afternoon. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great afternoon. Well, this is the first OC River Fest. Um, it's a festival that we have brought downtown to Main Street to bring people in to our county and to, hope, um, to give our community members something to do, to bring our tourists into this community, to have them um, participate in something in our community, to see the beauty of Oscoda County and what it has to offer. And that common thread is the Osabo River, and the that's the best way to celebrate this. So. Yes, spot, absolutely. Spot led to the River and the community as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So, what better what better thing to do yeah, is a lot of vendors here. That, that participate. We do. We have about um, sixty vendors here with us today. Great. So that is pretty awesome. I think. Yeah, that is very nice. great turnout for the first year. We did have to turn away some because we just ran out of space. <laughs> That's a nice problem to have. It is a good it? problem to have. And yesterday, the VFW um, put on a pig roast, and they and they also ran out of food. So again, another good problem to have. Another good problem and they're not they're coming from out of the area too to yes they are and right. Oscoda County is an amazing place to visit you betcha <laughs> thank you thank you Row City Drug, just south of the Row City city limits at 2640 North M33, featuring a state-of-the-art, completely automated and extremely accurate computer-filled prescription process. Here at Row City Drug, we're a family-owned and operated for over 20 years. We offer fast and friendly service. And we always take the extra step to make sure your needs are fulfilled. Hingeman Acres, canoe livery and resort on M33, just north of Mayo, catering to the outdoor enthusiasts. Cabins, canoes, kayaks, rafts, and more. Daytime or overnight trips along the world-famous Asabo River. A family getaway for over 75 years. The Michigan-made rebounding mailbox pool. Never again worry about the winter snowplow taking out your mailbox with this ingenious rebounding pool. Your mailbox takes a hit and keeps coming back year after year. Call now or visit their website, toughmailboxes.com. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Michigan Magazine. Now it's time to win. For a chance to win a pair of passes to the Michigan Renaissance Festival, here's that secret number, 777. Take it, send it to us, to our post office box, or email it to whywatchmichiganmagazine at gmail.com along with your address and phone number. The same goes for our phrase of the week. that will give you a chance to win some great Michigan products. This week's phrase is discover Michigan's hidden secrets along our rural back roads. Send it to us or email it to us. Have a wonderful weekend. And a fabulous rest of the week. I'm Barry Stutzman inviting you back next week for another edition of Michigan Magazine.
We'd like to thank all those that help keep Michigan Magazine on the road. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, a winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Thunder Bay Resort, a destination for all seasons with special events and packages. Thunder Bay Resort in Hillman. Experience the beauty, artistry, and taste of northern Michigan. Come to Amish Country Natural Products on Mount Tom Road, north of Mile, just off M33. From arts and crafts to fresh foods and vegetables, all natural, all local, all good. Stop by and get acquainted with Amish Country Natural Products, 1454 North Mount Tom Road, Mile. Planning your special day? Canyons Resort on beautiful Sage Lake can make it happen. Enjoy a beachfront wedding. Everything in one location. Food, beverage, lodging, and entertainment. Canyons handles everything from floral arrangements to the wedding cake. Call now to reserve your special day at Canyons. Vacation. Don't make the planning of it more than what you're trying to get away from. At NorthernMichiganCabinRentals.com, you can choose from over 2,500 cabins, cottages, lodges, resorts, lakefront vacation home rentals, and more. Whatever experience you're looking for, from rustic to luxury and everything in between. No more rustling with telephone books. No more endless internet searches. Just one site with over 2,500 Northern Michigan destinations. NorthernMichiganCabinRentals.com. Thank you.